morning, good morning, good morning. On my way to the accountant, it is cold. It's only 58 degrees. And I'm in Florida. What's up with that? But the sun's out, so it's it's gonna warm up. Look at my heater turned up to 80 in the car. Oh man, chilly, chilly, chilly. All the way over to the East Coast to my accountants. Let's get this stuff done and <sighs> headache. I hate doing this stuff. Paperwork. Zoe and Scooter are at the farm. They're working there today. They gotta get Crocs cleaned, baby Crocs cleaned. They gotta get uh, lemur cages cleaned. And then some other odds and ends on the farm. We'll call and check in on them a little later. All right, guys, wish me luck. stuff done and then head back home and see what Z and Scott got accomplished today. I'll give them a call sometime later in the day. It's still morning. It's warming up. It's 75 degrees now. I guess I can take off my sweatshirt when I get there. We'll see. All right. I'll see you guys shortly. Wish me luck. Oh my goodness. What a day. Sitting in an accounting office, doing my taxes. What a nightmare. Another reason. So you wanna own a business. It's easier just working for someone and getting paid. This is a nightmare. But, hey, it's got to be done. I called and checked on Z and Scott. They got a lot done at the farm. They got the baby crocs cleaned. They got the rabbits and goat and chicken done. Them cleaned. They got the lemurs cleaned. Scott did the healers and beat it. And Zoli fed the tortoises again. In 1,000 feet, turn so, back on East Kings Highway. A lot got done. Now, I've been driving for almost two hours. And I'm almost home. Turn left on East Kings Highway. Then I just gotta go through tomorrow check on everything they did and uh, do the shipping and then we'll go visit the baby crocs 
I love spending time with the baby Cubans and all the baby crocodiles. That's fun stuff. I think I deserve a little fun stuff. And we'll go spend time with the lemurs. Because they got them clean. A lot. A lot, lot, lot. Turn right lot. on East Kings Highway. But that's the way the bacon fries. So I'm going to go home, eat dinner, and then I'll meet you guys in the office tomorrow morning. And we'll go Continue check on, on the lemurs. To West and then Seminole we'll go check Avenue. on the crocs, the baby crocs, all right? We'll feed them. Oh boy. Can I just go to sleep? Rough day, long day. But it's a good day to be alive. Every day is a good day to be alive. And I get to play with animals. So I can't complain. Hi. Right. I'll see you guys in the morning. Get some sleep. Wake up early. Come hang out with us. We'll go play with the lemurs. A little bit, give them breakfast. And then we'll go uh, check on the baby crocs and give them some food. And get that stuff done. How's that sound? All right. Oh. I'll see you guys in the morning. Get some rest. Oh boy. Long day yesterday. What's up guys? Filters? Yeah. Oh boy. Fun, fun, fun. We gotta get filters today too. Z's, uh, yeah, we gotta run and get filters. Z's soaking the uh, crocodile rock. Oh, cool. That is so cool. That's crocodile jade. Not jade, what is it? Jasper. Crocodile jasper. That's an awesome, awesome piece. Josh brought that back for us from Denver. And look what Josh got us in Denver, Z. You saw this already, I see. Yeah, I that is the green calcite. That's gonna be awesome. Oh, you dropped That's the piece. Okay. That is cool. You got a big, he said, you got a big box of it. Did you see the piece he got us? Yeah, I did. For the office, the crocodile? Yeah. That is so cool. That is an awesome piece. Man, that is neat. Look at that. I didn't know it was, uh, it's just like Kambamba, but I think reversed, right? The, there's a lot more light in it, like. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure. I'm not even sure if it is reversed or if it's just, they call it both things. Yeah. But that's a beautiful chunk. Yeah. That's pretty neat. All right. Oh. Let's go see Lemur Z. <laughs> My back is hurting from driving so much yesterday. <sighs> Time to go see the lemurs. Hey guys. Hi. Hi Mort. Hi, buddy. Those are big teeth you have. Hi, everybody. Hi. Oh, they cleaned out everything. Gave you guys some new bamboo. Hey, what are you doing, buddy? 
Hi, Julian. Hi, buddy. How's everybody doing? You guys good? Hi, Zelda. Oh, boy. It's just one of those days. Hello. Hi. <laughs> you guys are so cute. Yes, you are. You guys are adorable. Oh, man. Hi, Mort. Mort, you tearing up everything. Oh, well, they did a great job. They cleaned out the lemurs. Got that done. And now, <laughs> go time, time to go check on the baby Crocs. He's washing something. Oh, oh you watering the plants? Yeah. There's our, what's that thing called? Our smelly plant, Z? Our corpse flower. Corpse lily. All kinds of cool plants. Desert rose over there. Staghorns. All kinds of neat stuff. There's Bogan Villa. Mm -hmm. That's a really cool plot flower. Let's see. Oh, all right. Let's go check on the baby Crocs. They said they cleaned those. And I cut all the grass yesterday, too. What are you doing, Z? Breaking up food? Yep. Eating everybody? Mm hmm Everybody keeps telling us to get a chopper for this, but they don't realize... Then it breaks it up into two smaller pieces and it creates too much dust. You know, this is the most efficient way to do this. Pill chopper just takes too long because you're going one at a time. And... Hello, gators. Hello, humans. And hello, baby Cubans. Hi. Let's see if we can. How do you turn that on? One. You want to turn that on for me? I'll turn on the red light so you guys can see them. Now, the way we do this is this year's and last year's baby are in here. Now, last year's baby. Like this one will be moved over with these guys in the big tub next year. And then this year's babies will stay in here and go with next year's babies. So they teach the new babies to eat. It's like monkey see, monkey do. That's how that works out. So that one's year before, and this is this year's. You can basically tell by head size which one's which on those. And like I said, these guys will go into the big black tubs that we've got uh, next year. And these ones will be added to that two years. So we'll have those three years together 
and then this year's babies will stay in the blue tub because next year's babies will be added to this year's babies so that they learn to eat. And that's how we do it. We always move them up and down, uh, up and then hold them back. And that way the previous years teaches the new year babies how to eat. Basically that when we're throwing in the food, I'll show you a little example. Z's got a bunch cut up for this year's babies and last year's babies. Come on over here, Z, so you guys can see this. They already hear it. See, there's, there's a couple of this year's babies already going after it. And... I spread it out a little bit so they all get some. And they're all eating. All of them. This year's babies are doing great. Chowing. And last year's babies definitely know how to eat. But I'm trying to watch to make sure all of this year's babies are eating. And it looks like they are. Yeah. Every one of this year's babies are eating, Z. They've already learned to mimic last year's babies, and then that is food. Here, let's do this. Um, I'm gonna feed everybody here. Now we keep the food in there so moths don't get in there and bugs. We gave these guys two handfuls. These guys, these guys one and a half handfuls. And look, they're chowing. That's two year olds and three year olds. And then uh, here's the bigger ones. Those guys eat. Look at the bigger ones, Z. They're growing good. And they're typical Cubans, dude. They are. They'll go up and see that. He jumped up after my hand. Now, these guys over here will feed them. And they'll get the rest of that. And it's just a whole feeding cycle here at the swamp. All kinds of cool crocodilian and other cool animals too. Look, Z, the male peacock's behind you. He's feeling kind of bald. He lost all his tail feathers already. But uh, they'll start coming back about February. They'll start. He'll start growing that long tail again. He's got that white fluff over there. That's from the molting. He's going through the final molting process. And uh, that'll start to come back soon. But... Oh yeah, they're eating up a storm. Oh, I hear arguing going on over there. Somebody grabs somebody's foot. Or... Really? You two? It's always you two that start. I don't know why that is. Let's give them a little more food in there so there's less fighting. There's more food grabbing. Give them one more scoop of that. Ugh. 
go eat it all. Now, if you guys remember, alligators and crocodiles, I've taught you guys, their stomach is about the size of a football on an adult. So these guys' stomach proportion-wise is probably about that big. And they eat all that, fill up, and they're full. And they digest along with temperature helps them digest. So that's why during the winter um, and babies, we keep them in here, younger ones, because as you can see, we put the, uh, these are like 500 watt heat lamps that heat the water and heat the uh, crocodiles. They'll get up on the bricks and sit there and uh, that helps them digest their food. Now we only feed twice a week in here because we're feeding a smaller amount so that they grow slower. They absorb all that nutrients and they're not getting obese. The thing we learned, we, we've raised Cubans before at a fast pace. And I was met with the, the leading guy in Cuba, Cuba uh, Toby, he was Castro's main guy in charge of the uh, Cuban crocodile farm, which they bred for hides because Cuban crocodiles have one of the most beautiful and thickest hides. So it was sought after for the leather trade. And then they used the meat there as well to feed families over there, you know, but uh, Toby in recent, I think last year, passed away. So I don't know who's doing that crocodile farm anymore. And there's a, another bunch of crocodile, Cuban crocodile guys in Zambada Swamp. Uh, Savannah from Gatorland's always over there working with them. And they're doing incredible things to try to save the Cuban crocodile in the wild. And hopefully, like I always tell you guys, one day we can donate a bunch of baby Cuban crocodiles that are three, four foot and send them back to Cuba through Gatorland. And that would be incredible because these are 100% pure blooded Cuban crocodiles. You know, their DNA has been checked on the adults and that's who's breeding Ricky and Lucy and Gatorlands have all been checked. And then the other guy here in Florida, Dragonwood Conservatory has been checked and they've all got pure blood. So this is a wonderful thing. Hopefully in the future, they go back to Cuba and reintroduced into the Sambata Swamp. They get rid of the American crocodiles in there and the Cubans take over again. So you'll have 100% Cuban crocodiles and right now, I know they're critically endangered. I think there's only like 500 in the wild less that are purebred Cubans. So that'll be a tremendous, tremendous thing. And Gatorland does so much for crocodile conservation. They're doing it all over Australia, Jamaica, uh, Cuba, um, Venezuela, I think. There's several other places that they're working on. They're always traveling and trying to work on crocodile conservation, which is a wonderful thing. Uh, because after all, crocs rule, alligators rule. Uh, they're just so, so cool. And you guys, look at this year's baby. Absolutely beautiful. Aren't they like one of the prettiest crocodilian species. Look at that yellow in there. Look at those big eyes. They sit high on top of the head. So you know they're hunting in trees and everything. These guys are jumping up out of the water and grabbing rats out of the trees there in Cuba. And birds and other uh, mammals as well, I suspect. You know, and plus they're still eating fish and they're eating everything they can. Little frogs and everything is babies like this. They're eating bugs and everything in the wild. 
So we're just trying to do our part and produce as many Cubans and as we can. So hopefully one day they can go in the future uh, in Cuba. But you guys, this is so cool. You see, I can't wait till we got to build a five acre Cuban pen and put like 40 in there. No. Yeah, no. seriously. I want the biggest Cuban pen in the United States. Have fun with that. Well, you, dude, who do you think, when I die, who do you think is going to be working it? Ugh, God. You're going to have to hire somebody to do it. Are you willing to work with Cuban crocodiles? Z might hire you. Um, you guys, there you have it. Z, I got to tell you, you and Scott did an incredible job yesterday. Thank you. You guys did great. You watered everybody, took care of everybody, did the daily things. You Plus you, you did the lemur enclosures. Plus you, uh, mowed a bit. Mowed a lot. I was driving around. You guys got a lot done. Scott mowed everything. Mm -hmm. And then you did all the baby crocs. You guys cleaned them all just in time for them to get dirty again. Mm -hmm. It's a long, tedious process. Clean, get dirty. Clean, get dirty. Clean, get dirty. And that's the thing. We try to clean these once a week at a minimal because even like when I dump food in there, if I dump a lot of food, the food will break up in the water and they'll drink that water and they still get the vitamins and the nutrients. Now, we clean it once a week because you don't want the poop and pee in there as, as well. So, a little bit, like tomorrow this water will start to get brown from, no, well, not tomorrow because they're chowing. They're going to eat every piece today. But when we feed... Again, what's the next feed day? Monday, right? Uh, yeah. Today's Friday. Tuesday. Monday. Okay. Monday night, I'll feed. Okay. And then when, uh, when we get back and you guys are doing everything, I'll feed the Crocs. And then we'll do it again. It switches every week because you're only going twice a week. So, And you only have uh, time to do so much. But once they get outside, it'll be cool because it'll be hooked up to the big filter. And all we do is open the valves and it goes through a big filter and cleans it. It'll be nice. And then we can clean it, you know, three times a week because we just run it. And it'll be a whole lot better. All right, guys, make sure you hit that thumbs up and smash that thumbs up. Like, comment, subscribe, and definitely leave us our, your comments. We love reading them. And don't forget, every Friday night we go live and we just have some fun. We talk about our week and then we do some sales of stuff to raise money for the farm to be able to do continue doing the things we love doing. And, you know, there's so much going on here. Rescuing alligators, taking care of all our animals. And, Z, what do you think? I want to run this by you. Should we start doing Wildlife Wednesdays again? Just pick an animal and do fun facts about those animals and teach people about them. It's just, the problem is carving out the time. But we can shoot that video anytime through the week and save it for Wednesday. We can try. That's the key point is just us trying. Right, right. we got to get done what we can get done until we grow. And also we have to go to somebody's place as well yeah a lot of the times yeah and that's that's what gets tough but when we do go we can shoot several and then save them up yeah um oh z mm. don't forget this friday valor bk that's valor bare knuckle fight that is gonna be awesome z scott myself reed are going up to Jacksonville this Friday night. So we won't be live this Friday. Well, actually, we'll be live, but we won't do a sale. We'll do a sale instead Sunday night. Um, i got to see if John wants to go with us. You know, ask him. And it's the Bare Knuckle Fight. It is Ken Shamrock's new league. 
and it he actually launched it right before COVID, and it was it did incredible. The first one, they were sold out, and now they're back, and they're back with a vengeance. He says, "It's going to be awesome. We're going to go up check out this fight up in Jacksonville. So if you're in the Jacksonville area, get a hold of me. Look for Reed and I and Z and Scott walking around giving away tickets." We bought a hundred tickets and we're going to give those away. So if you live in the Jacksonville area or you're close and you want to go to the fight, go to valorbk.com and backslash get swamped and claim yourself a ticket and you can go to the fight and see us there and see what this Valor bare knuckle is all about. You know, they do that stuff in the UK for years, Z. Mm -hmm. That's the real, real ultimate fight, that bare knuckle. I want to check this out and see what it's all about. You know, plus we'll have fun meeting people up there. And I know Reed's going to bring some crystals to give away. So the Gem Club is going to be giving away tickets and crystals up there in Jacksonville. So, if, like I said, if you're in that area, look for us on the streets of Jacksonville next Friday. And then Friday evening, we'll be at the fight. Ken Shamrock's fight. Ready to, I'm going to knock you out. That's right, baby. And we'll have a lot of fun. You guys rock. Get swamped. Share your passion. Random. Ow. He broke my nose, see? Random acts of kindness. They go a long way, make the world a much better place. God bless, and see ya!